Okie dokie. Next up, the Isaiah Bradley and Sam Wilson chat. Um, definitely a very complicated breakdown, but I spent some time meditating on it, and I'm pretty sure I think I know what to make of this. Um, and and I think the, the phrase that sticks out the most from that entire conversation was when Isaiah Bradley told Sam, he's like, they're never going to let a black man be Captain America. Any self-respecting black man wouldn't want to be. Um, man, that is, that is such a loaded, that was such a loaded fucking conversation. Um, you know, talking about erasure, talking about... You know, I mean, honestly, like listening to that conversation for the second time was quite eerie because you, when you listen to what Isaiah did, breaking his, his boys out of that POW camp, it's exactly what Steve Rogers did. It is exactly what Steve Rogers did. And Isaiah got 30 years in jail. If you remember from the first Avenger, Steve literally disobeyed orders to go and break those boys out, including Bucky. Um, and, <laughs> and Isaiah and Steve did the exact same thing. You can see the difference in treatment that they got. Um, and Steve was ready to take punishment. He was ready to take the punishment. When he came back, if you remember, he came back and he was like, well, I did what I had to do and I know I disobeyed orders, so I'm ready to face the consequences. Throw me in jail if you have to. But did they? Hell no, they did not. <laughs> they hailed him as a hero. And just seeing the stark difference between how they treated Steve and Isaiah, honestly, like, obviously, I can understand his frustration and his bitterness. Um... And it was very painful to watch, um, especially when you talked about the shots and everything, like how they told them that it was tetanus and stuff like that. And I told you guys that they did, they have tested different strains of vaccines on military members. And when I say military members, I mean when I was in and currently, like present day. Um, and so that really struck a fucking chord. I don't even have superpowers, so I'm a little bitter about that. <laughs> um, but... You know, and he says, you know, a lot of a lot of good one-liners that you got to think about. Like, if you're not bitter, you're blind. And like, yeah, like every black person in this country, I feel, is bitter. And you know, for and for good reason because our our relationship with this country is so complicated. It's so complicated, and um, and people are like, well. You know, it, Isaiah said, you know, no self-respecting black man would want to be Captain America, yet here Sam is in his training montage, ready to be Captain America. What do we make of that? What do we make of that, you know? And I think this comes back to, I think it's, it's very important to acknowledge that blackness is not a monolith. Black people are not a monolith. We all have different feelings about this country based on who we are and our experiences, and they're all valid. Both Isaiah and Sam's choices, decisions, views are fucking valid. I feel like, and I feel like I can understand Isaiah and Sam at the same time because, like, I remember last year, I, my, my friend asked me to sing a national anthem for a promotion ceremony on an Air Force base. And out of muscle memory, I said, sure, yeah, whatever, because I used to be the national anthem queen wherever the fuck I went. And I was like, yeah, sure. But it was the year of George Floyd and everything. And, um, and at that, it was the first time that I ever stepped onto a military base since leaving the military. Um, and I was the first time being around people in uniform you know, and, you know, and it brought all of the trauma back. I had a panic attack. I had to take a Xanax. And I just realized how much I really did not want to sing that fucking national anthem. Because I, I was just like, national anthem for what? This country fucking hates me. This is like, they, they've never accepted me. And when I was in the military, they didn't fucking protect me. They let me go through hell. They let me be harassed. They let me almost die you know and so I went through with it I sang it but I was shaking and I was pissed and like 
it was rough. And I'm at the point where I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever sing the national anthem again. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Um, and so obviously not to the extent that Isaiah got it 30 years in prison, basically being tuskegee but I get the bitterness. I feel the bitterness every fucking day. Every time I gotta take medication, every time I gotta go to therapy, I feel that fucking bitterness for being abandoned by my country, by the military or whatever, feeling like I don't belong. And that is completely valid. That bitterness, that anger is completely valid. And Isaiah is completely valid in that. And like after, especially after you've been through trauma like that, you are definitely entitled to feel those feelings and be bitter, I feel. That is completely, that is completely justified. And that is Isaiah's truth. That is Isaiah's truth and there's nothing wrong with that. But like Sam said, what's the point of all that sacrifice if we don't keep fighting? Which is exhausting, right? Because we shouldn't have to keep fighting for something so fundament fundamental to be seen as equal, to be seen as humans in this place. Like, it, it is so fucking exhausting. But I truly believe, and like I said, both men's feelings are valid, but I have something that I have kind of come to lately is that I think one of the most harmful things that we as black people can do is buy into the lie that this country is not ours to because it is this country was built on our backs literally literally built on our backs built on our backs built on <laughs> built on the cultivation of this land by the tribes that came before that is almost that are, are almost completely wiped out. We are amongst the people who built this country. We've spilled blood in every war. This is in some ways more our country than the people that would have us believe that it's not, that would have us believe that we don't belong. And that is such the oxymoron. But I think the biggest the biggest, one of the biggest awful things that we could do is to buy into the lie that this country is not ours. This is our fucking birthright. Forcibly, we didn't want to come here, but you, you, but you exploited and utilized our energy, our ancestors' energies, bodies and souls, blood, sweat and tears to build what we have here. Not only economically and politically, but socially in the arts and the entertainment, like so much of America is based and built on black culture. This is, this is our country. And I think one of the worst things that we can do is to fall into the trap of believing that it is not. And our process, I feel like our process of getting there is complicated. Like I said, it's a complicated relationship. And wherever we are at that point, like wherever we are on our journey of our relationship with this country, even if we still, even if we never get to that point of feeling that, is completely valid. Because being a person of color here, being a black person here is pretty traumatic. It is. Whether you want to, whether you want to believe it or not, it is traumatic. But at least where I stand, I'm like, I'm so happy that Sam took up that shield because it's him saying that, no, this is our country too. And you gonna see me, Captain America gonna be black today because this is our, because this is our birthright too. This ratchet ass country, this fucked up country, it's ours too, fuck it. I kind of liken it to, you know, a lot of us, you know, in TikTok, we were talking about like leaving TikTok black creators because we've been shadow banned. We've been suppressed so much. And, you know, talking about like going to other platforms, which I have branched out to other platforms as in this one, <laughs> you know, um, like just completely leaving TikTok, you know, the blackout days, like just nobody posts, don't do it. And I'm just like, you know what? Nope, fuck that. I'm not doing that shit. There is no way I am never, ever, ever, ever giving up a seat 
at a table that I have earned with my own fucking two hands, with my hard work. Like, do whatever the fuck you want to be, but you know what? I'm going to sit the right fuck here because I earned this seat. You're not going to bully me. You're not going to gaslight me out of believing that I deserve this seat. No matter what you do. Suppress all you want, whatever, because you know what? I've been through worse. We shouldn't have to push through things like this. We really shouldn't have to muscle through and be like, I've seen worse and be strong and shit. But you know what? It is what it is. And truth is, yeah, I have had worse than being. <laughs> it's awful being shadow banned and shit on TikTok. But I'm like, my black ass ain't going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere because I know that's what you want. I know it's what they want. They want us gone. They want to bully us out. They don't want to pressure us out, gaslight us out. And it's like, no. Just like, just like America, TikTok's built on black culture, built on black genius, built on black entertainment and trends and culture and all that. You'll be damned if you think that I am giving up my seat at a table that we helped build. Fuck that shit. I am not going anywhere. I have always, I've decided, like, I am not fucking going anywhere. Oh no, not I, not fucking I. I really do believe that one of the worst things that we can do is buy into this notion that this country is not ours. And like I said, we can feel, each of us can feel however we want to towards this country because blackness is not a monolith. Everybody's experiences are the same but different as far as the black community. And it's a complicated thing. It, this is a home our home is somewhere where we were forced to come to and the place that we originally came from is just so far out of reach now that we barely have any connection and even though we try and we're trying to have a connection a, a, a lot these days it's still hard but you know what our ancestors put so much into this fucking soil and there is no way ever I am ever 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 going to act like this country I don't have a birth right here and similar with similarly with TikTok <laughs> I'm not going anywhere I mean, you gonna see me you gonna see me and you gonna see my face and you gonna fucking deal with it and you gonna be uncomfortable I will grace you with my presence and you gonna be so annoyed and I'm gonna fucking love it out of spite I'm gonna succeed out of fucking spite and you're gonna fucking hate it and I'm gonna fucking love it I can't help but think that might be what Sam's vibe is and that's kind of what I felt during that training montage I'm like this motherfucker is going to succeed and y'all gonna fucking hate it but guess what baby this is our country too so in some ways it's more our country than a lot of you than a lot of people's I mean, technically, a lot of our ancestors have been here longer than a lot of white people. So, yes, both men's, you know, like I said, I understand both men's perspectives. And they're both valid. And I feel like I feel both at the same time. Don't know if I'll ever sing the national anthem again. Maybe not. Maybe not. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm allowed to, but, I'm, but we're allowed to evolve. We're allowed to change. We're allowed to feel anything about, we're, we're really allowed to feel however we wanna feel about it. Because the black experience is so unique and so traumatic. And there is no one way to process trauma. Everybody handles trauma differently. Um, so yeah, very complicated, but I don't know, man. Those are my thoughts. Those, those are my thoughts. I am not buying into, I'm trying not to buy into the lie that this country is not ours. Even though every day on the news, it seems like it's not. It seems like it's not. In reality, this is our birthright. Fuck what you heard.